in this year, 2002, the tradition of Charlie Perker, uh, Charlie Yardbird Parker, and the Birds of the Feather interpreting his music, the drummer Roy Haynes, who leads Kenny Garrett, Dave Holland, Dave Kukowski on this date on record with uh, Roy Hargrove on trumpet on Now's the Time. I found, uh, I found Roy Haynes on the East Coast. Uh, I don't know if he has his feet up or not on a Saturday night. Not likely, but uh, welcome. It's good to renew with you again through the decades, sir. It's really nice to hear your voice. Thank you. Well, Roy Haynes, uh, you arrive October 19th at Northrop Auditorium for the Northrop Jazz season, and 8 o'clock is the time, and you're bringing the legacy of Parker with you. And you actually worked with him in those years, oh, around 1943, didn't you? Not not 43. Uh, not 43? No, 43. Is, I was still a teenager in Boston. 49 and through 52, wasn't it? 49, right. That's what I joined him in October of 1949. Ah, uh, thanks for letting us keep the history uh, properly, accurately <laughs> okay. judged. Very good. How old were you at the time? Uh, let's see. I was born in 1925. Are you a good mathematician? Well, he. I was probably, I know in 1950, I think uh, I was 25, so I was about 24. When you uh, first uh, worked with Parker, what were your impressions as a young man in music? What were my impressions? Yes. As a young man in music? And uh, facing this uh, gro uh, growing, struggling legend. Well, uh, that was a very happy period in my life, musically and otherwise. In New York, New York was, well, you were around New York during that time, right? Well, I was there... Nineteen fifty uh, to fifty-six. Oh, okay. Well, even uh, that whole period, I was just so excited. You know, New York was—it uh, was—I don't know—it was a great feeling. A lot of uh, new clubs, like uh, Birdland, had just opened up Broadway at corner Fifty Second Street, and there were a lot of nice young ladies around. And I was single and free and young and. <laughs> Playing with Charlie Parker, it was very exciting during that time for me. Well, you were uh, actually in a sort of street academy, weren't you? Uh, uh, of some sort. What did you uh, What did you learn in that environment with Parker? Oh, I'm sure I learned a lot. I can't uh, pick out one particular thing that I learned, but I, I'm sure I absorbed uh, quite a bit. You know, being young in that period... Uh, uh, it was so exciting. I, was, I guess I was learning something new every time I would uh, get, get on the bandstand. Well, as a timekeeper, uh, did you uh, have the freedom to uh, to sort of guide things along in spite of the fact that Parker was the leader? Well, uh, I, I'm sure that's probably why he hired me, because before I joined Parker, I was with uh, Lester Young for two years. And then uh, I left and started working with Miles a bit in there and Bud Powell. So I think uh, these people would use me because they wouldn't usually tell me what to do too much. You know, especially Charlie Parker or Lefty Out. Either of me. You know, I was, uh, you know, I was aware of what was happening and what I was to do. And I think I went ahead like a young man and, and, and took care of the business. And you continue to do so. Uh, thank you so much. I'm talking with Roy Haynes, who brings a group, Birds of a Feather, to Northrop Auditorium, campus of the University of Minnesota, to inaugurate the Northrop Jazz season. And what a pleasure to um, recall some of these days along the line. I'd like to mention just a couple of names, really. Early days uh, around Sabby Lewis out of Boston, that was a remarkable band, wasn't it? Oh, that really was. Now, that was probably uh, around 1943 when I had filled in with him a bit. Only yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way, but when I stop and think about it, I say, wow, seems like it was another life. Another time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Roy, um, if I mention the name um, Max Roach, what do you say? Uh, I'd say yes. 
Max Roach's uh, son recommended me to Charlie Parker uh-huh. when he was leaving because uh, Max and Miles were very close. You know, they were both working with Charlie Parker before I joined. And uh, Miles left first. It was a, a club in uh, Brooklyn called Soldier Myers. I don't know if you remember that name or not. I think it opened uh, around, uh, at least they started having live music around 1950 during uh, the summer, someplace in that. Or late, late 49, I think it was. And I played there with Miles. Then Max Roach, being from Brooklyn, he had left Charlie Parker to take his own group into the same club in Brooklyn, so demise. And that's how I got the gig with Charlie Parker. But, uh, yeah, it was great. It was, you know. Max Roach, of course, was uh, one of the leaders of this new music during that period. You know, and I was right uh, along, I don't know if I was beside him or behind him, but <laughs> uh, it was a great period anyhow. Well, in the alphabet, too, uh, Clark. Uh, Clark. Kenny Clark? Kenny Clark. Uh, yes. I met Kenny Clark when I was still very young in Boston. He was playing with uh, Red Allen during that period. That was before the word bebop was uh, heard of. And then later I found out uh, that he was one of the guys that was playing around Mittens with uh, Monk and all the guys. But when I got to New York in 1945 to join Louis Russell, I think Kenny Clark was either in the Army or he was in Europe. But I do remember when he did come around 52nd Street, he thought I was playing something very new and different. I remember him... uh, you know, telling me that. We're talking about drummers uh, from uh, you, Roy Haynes, to uh, Max Roach, to Kenny Clark, Art Blakey. Art uh, Blakey? Uh, he was my buddy. I met him uh, when he was playing with Fletcher Henderson, which would have been 43, 44, when he would come to Boston. There was a club in Boston called the TikTok. It was a big upstairs place. Well, all the big bands you know, that were around there. And I remember seeing Fat Swallow there, would play there. And uh, Art Blakey came there with Fletcher Henderson, and then he decided to stay in Boston, and we became very close friends, you know, from that period. Then when Billy Eckstein left Earl Hines and started his band, I think Shadow Wilson was the drummer at first, and then before I knew it, uh, Art Blakey was joining the band, I think, in Boston. Art Blakey, Max Roach, Kluke, See. Yeah, well, uh, that was very early. I, I think uh, they admired me for what I was doing, and, and now it's, uh, now's the time. Now's my time, I think. It's been a very exciting year, and uh, of course, uh, our Blakey is not with us now, and Max is around, but he is not th- as active as he was earlier. And uh, fortunately, I'm very thankful that uh, I've been very busy I don't know how much longer I'm going to continue to travel on the road and, and check in the hotels and doing sound checks and spending a lot of time at the airports all over the world. And I imagine travel is one big challenge in its own, particularly if you're a drummer. Uh, yeah, a funny thing, I, I go to Vegas a lot, and uh, a young lady was asking me on the plane, wow. Uh, do I gamble when I go to Vegas? I said, this is a gamble, right, being on the plane. <laughs> and she was a student, so she got a big kick out of that. Roy Haynes, uh, we look to you arriving at Northrop Auditorium safely and travel well, and uh, we look to you uh, uh, extending the uh, Parker tradition and your own contributions as one of the great percussionists in this medium called jazz. Oh, merci beaucoup, monsieur. Thank you so much, Soleil. Good and I look forward. Am I going to see you when I arrive there? I'm, uh, I'm afraid working that night, but if I can get backstage before or after, I will. Okay, very good. Really nice chatting with you. Thanks very much for taking time to talk with us. You're welcome. Minnesota Public Radio talking with Roy Haynes, who brings birds of a feather to Northrop Auditorium, 8 p.m., October 19th, next Saturday at 8 Thank you.